Father, we give you all the glory and the praise, and we say thank you so much for making it possible that we could gather together today in your name, the name of Jesus, to worship you, to praise you, to glorify you, to magnify your name, to learn more about the things of God, to present ourselves. And we come before you and present ourselves before you. I ask and I pray, Lord, once again, you quicken your word and make it real and relevant to every one of us. Open up your word, order our steps in your word today. And I pray, Lord, that you think through my thoughts, speak through my vocal cords, let your word go forth. Let it accomplish that which you've said to accomplish in every one of our lives and the hearts. We'll be careful to give you all the glory and the praise. And we thank you that you're always confirming your word with signs and wonders and miracles. We commit the ministry of the word of God into your hands. And I'm asking, I pray, Holy Spirit, take full control. Let a fresh anointing rest upon everyone to hear your word, to receive your word. And I pray you help us to be doers of your word where, where, where required. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So please turn to me, if you haven't already, to the book of Numbers, Numbers chapter 23. I'm going to verse uh, 19. Numbers chapter 23, verse 19. This is a familiar verse here. And God's saying in his word, he says, God is not a man. Thank God he's not a man. Sometimes I, I, I wonder to myself, I say, I mean, if... It's a good thing I'm not God, because if I was, if, if I was, there are certain things I would do. And then when you read the scriptures, you realize, that, you know what, that's not God-like. You know what I'm talking about. You know, um, God wants us to demonstrate all the fruit of the Spirit. And sometimes we're not always patient, are we? And that, hence, one of the fruits of the Spirit is to be patient. Sometimes we're not always kind. Sometimes we're not always gentle. Sometimes we're not always, uh, 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 we're not always meek. All that, and hence we've got the fruit of the spirit. So as we develop and we grow in these things of God, uh, these fruit of the spirit become a part of us, right? Becomes a reality. So the scripture says, "God is not a man that he should lie." So men will lie. All men have lied. That's the bottom line. All men have told lies at some point in in their life, right? Men on a whole are not truthful. Right, and they're truthful when it's convenient for them, and when it's not convenient for them, they're not truthful. I'm speaking on a whole. Even you have born again believers who are professed to be Christians. Even they tell lies from time to time. And when the when the back is up against the wall and the pressure is on, and depending on the circumstance, uh, they will revert to the flesh often, and and attempt to lie their way out of a situation instead of telling the truth, instead of being honest and sincere or relying on God for wisdom, the words to use in a particular situation. So the scripture is saying very clearly here, and we can understand something about God. It says, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. In other words, he doesn't have to have a change of mind. He's not like you and myself that when we mess up, when we sin, when we come short of the glory of God, that we have to repent. Repent means an about turn, an about face. It's a reversal, right? God doesn't have to do that. So the scripture is saying that's not him. Has he not said, shall he not do it? In other words, what the scripture says, what he said, he's going to do. Amen. Amen? This is God. What he said, he's going to do. Has he not said, and shall he not do it? Or has he not spoken, and shall he not make it good? Amen. Today's message is, is about how God, how you can rely on God and trust his word. What he said in his word, he will do. Amen. We're talking about uh, uh, the, 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 the uh, fulfillment of the, of the birth of Christ. Mm -hmm. We're in the Christmas season and many uh, people of the world celebrate Christmas from a religious point of view. Many celebrated from uh, a festivity perspective. Mm -hmm. Many of the church celebrate Chris Christmas. Mm -hmm. And yet many of the church do not r realize why they're celebrating Christmas. True. They don't know the truth behind it. All they know is about giving gifts and receiving gifts. And it's a good time of the year. It's a good season and things like that. Mm -hmm. And if one is going to celebrate the birth of Christ, when I think of Christmas, I think of the birth of Christ. That's what you should too. Because yeah. that's how it should be. Um, you should be thinking about from a scriptural perspective, from how God saw it. 
and how he continues to see it. Not so much from a worldly perspective. Uh, those of you who are with us in our previous Bible studies, we looked at the history of Christmas. And we saw that many of the practices, according to Jeremiah chapter 10, uh, is vain in all cultures. Many of the cultures before Christ was, came into the earth, or, or approximately 2,000 years ago, they were having pagan celebrations around this time of the year. And when, and they continued to have these pagan celebrations, the Roman Catholic Church came along and, um, in, in the history, they decided to uh, uh, Christianize these pagan practices and make it Christian-like, and so let's make this the day that we celebrate the birth of the Son of God, S U, sorry, S O N, the Son of God, yeah. right? Yeah. Now, what they were doing prior to that, the pagans were celebrating uh, the Son. They would worship the Son, S U N. Mm -hmm. That's what they were into, and uh, many still do today. Because uh, a lot of these pagan practices are coming about. And we took time to look at those, you know, things that were all cultures, all cultures in the past have had winter solstice celebrations. Yeah. And, uh, and again, the scriptures say it's vain. And we need to take time to understand what are you going to participate in and what you're not going to participate. In? What are you going to embrace, what you're not going to embrace. And, and have a, a good scriptural balance. Yeah. Um, I was reading this recently where, according to history, those who used to celebrate Satanila, that is the worship of, uh, of the sun and about all the reveling to do with the planet Saturn and all that, in order for them to let their neighbors and the community know that they were a worshiper of that, and Wicca, uh, the, the witchcraft was also involved with that. So I'm talking about the pagan. They would put, they would light a candle and put, a, a put a light it and put it in the window. Yes. Mm -hmm. And therefore, anybody walking through a community or a village or a city, they would know. Oh, there's a, someone who's celebrating Satanelia. There's someone who's who's a worship of the sun. There's someone who's part of this uh, pagan practice, and they would identify with them. Mm -hmm. And we can see now in how all that has now come forward and where we are today where people light up their homes, they light up the windows with all kinds of lights. It's, you know, uh, not necessarily with a candle, but it's electronically and things like that. So it's, it's kind of interest, interesting to know the history. We can also see how, why people put wreaths on their doors, doors and, and um, evergreen branches and all that sort of stuff, mistletoe on their, on their homes and the, in the rooms inside, outside and all that. And again, we know from history, it was to uh, ward off evil spirits and, and to bring good luck, so to speak, and all, all this kind of stuff that would be well with them. It's, 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 it's good to know the practice so that you can draw the, so you can make a decision. I'm not going to tell you what to do, what not to do, um, um, but uh, it's just good to know so that you can see where do I draw the line? Yes. You know, how do, I, how do I celebrate the birth of Christ? How do I honor the birth of Christ? How do I, how do I, um, do it in a godly way that is pleasing to God and it's not going to compromise my, my uh, walk with God, my relationship with the Lord. I'm not going to be embracing, I'm, I'm not going to have mixture. And, and so many people have mixture. Even, even the word Christmas is, is two words. It's, it's, it's a mixture, Christ and Mass. Well, if you know anything about Mass, um, it's just something from a, a scriptural point of view you don't want to have anything to do with. But nevertheless, um, it's just that you, it's just the word itself is that, you know, it's a hybrid, it's a mixture, and there's something not exactly right about the whole thing. But the scripture says here that in Numbers chapter 23, verse 19, that uh, uh, God doesn't have, a, doesn't have to change his mind about what he says. What, what he says, he will do, and what he's spoken, he, he will make good on it. Glory to God. We see, I'm just going to quote a couple of scripture verses in Acts chapter 27, verse 25. We see uh, uh, Paul speaking here and says, Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer. If you can recall, he was, there was a shipwreck. Uh, he, you know, he was out to sea and, 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 the, and the ship, you know, they were having a terrible time. But he says, and he encourages those on the ship. He says, 
Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. Yeah. What's, 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 what's he saying here? I be, you know, so he was telling them that it's going to be well with them. Nobody's going to lose their lives. Amen. And he's saying, I believe what God's told me. And other words, what God's told me, that's exactly the way it's going to be. Amen. And saying, so what, what, what I'd like to communicate to you today is that what God has said in the past about the birth of Christ, it's exactly the way it is going to, it was, and it shall be. Amen. In other words, you can trust the word of God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, again, Hallelujah. We see in Luke chapter 1, uh, verse 45. You don't have to turn there yet. We will be turning to some scriptures in a moment. Um, it says, And blessed is she that believed. This is Elizabeth speaking about Mary when Mary showed up. And Elizabeth is pregnant. And Mary is pregnant with the Messiah. And uh, uh, she's prophesying. It says, Blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. In other words, again, just looking at these three scriptures, uh, uh, Numbers chapter 23, Acts chapter 27, Luke chapter 1, verse 45, um, that when God speaks something, it is guaranteed it is going to come to pass. Praise God. Amen? Praise God. Guaranteed it is going to come Amen. to pass. And therefore, we can rely on the word of God. We can rest on the word of God. We can stand on the word of God. Now, I'd like to encourage you to put your trust in God. Put your trust in His Word. Get into His Word. Get to know His Word. Get to know what His Word says and what it doesn't say. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. In M Matthew chapter 1, if you go there with me in the New Testament, I'm going to read you some scriptures. You can follow with me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm sure many of you are familiar with these passages, but again, I would like to give you some scriptural references so that you, you can anchor your faith on why you believe in the birth of Christ. And if you're going to celebrate Christmas, why are you going to celebrate? Amen? Glory to God. So that you just not just participate in this holiday season ignorantly of, from a scriptural perspective. And many, unfortunately, many people are. That's the unfortunate thing about it. They, they, know, they don't know the truth anymore. Uh, they would rather believe in Santa Claus and, and promote that lie than really understand the truth. Right? Uh, Matthew chapter 1, are you there? Amen. Verse 18, and the Word of God says, Now the birth of Christ was on this wise, when, as his mother Mary was a spouse to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, not willing to make her a public example was minded to put her away privily. So he was going to divorce her. Yeah. I mean, he was engaged to her. He's married to her, but you know how the Jewish weddings were. The, the marriage had not been consummated yet. So he was engaged, and because he's engaged, he's married. In other words, he'd signed the contract, she signed the con she signed the contract, and it was witnessed by the parents, and they, they, put, they, put, they had that, they drank the wine and, and all that to, to seal it and all that. And, you know, and during the time, that, during the course of time, between him preparing for her so he can, so she can move to his home, the home that he's preparing, uh, she, he found her pregnant. So he was planning his mind to do what any other normal man would do at that time. He says, obviously you've been unfaithful to me and I'm going to divorce you. Well, the good thing about Joseph, he was planning to do it privately. He didn't want to make a public example of her and put it to shame. So this, this tells you about his character, mm -hmm. that he's not one to embarrass people, even though it would seem like she's in the wrong. Yeah. But the reality is, we know from the scriptures, she was not in the wrong. Mm -hmm. God was involved in this whole thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we see in verse 20, um, several ver next few verses we see, I'm reading from verse 20 to, to verse 23, God gives direction, right? Why? Why he said, but while he thought on these things, so while Joseph is entertaining in his mind, I'm planning to divorce Mary. I'm going to put her away. I'm going to find a way how to do it so that I don't do it in a way that is going to embarrass her or bring shame to her family or, sh or shame to me or, or anything like that. So while he's thinking of these things, uh, God interrupts him. Okay, he, he gets interrupted by God. And so, because the scripture says, 
but while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived of her is of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Now, now he, he didn't know that until um, the angel of the Lord showed up in his dream. Now, maybe Mary tried to explain it to him, but it would be difficult for her to explain it to him. Yeah. I don't know if she explained it. Maybe she did. Maybe she didn't. Maybe she attempted to. Maybe she attempted to and he didn't want to listen to her. It could very well be. It would be hard for him to accept it and believe. So God intervened. I want you to see something about how God operates. Remember, we started off in Numbers chapter 23 and, and verse 19. That God, God is not a man that he should lie. Neither is the son of man that he should repent. Neither. In other words, what he has said, he will do. What he's spoken, he'll follow through. Right? Yeah. So he interrupts the thought process of Joseph or what Joseph is planning to do so that he can fulfill his word. Amen. I want you to see that, that, that um, God will interrupt where he needs to interrupt to ensure that his word is going to come to pass. God. Right? I, 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 how do we know that? Again, in Jeremiah, if you want, if, 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 if we want to turn there with me, you can. But in Jeremiah... Uh, chapter 1, God is dealing with Jeremiah the prophet. He's calling him to become a prophet. He's commissioning him to go forth and do the work of God. And what do we see in Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 12? It says, uh, this is King James, it says, Then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast well seen, for I will hasten my word to perform it. Now, when I read the King James, it doesn't really give much justice for what this, what this latter part of this verse is all about. But if we go to the New King James Version, the latter part of the verse says, instead of saying, I will hasten my word to perform it, it says, for I am ready to perform my word. And so it gives you a little bit more understanding of what, of what this latter part of this verse is. I'm ready to perform my word. Now, the NIV puts it this way. The Lord said unto me, you have seen correctly, for I am watching to see that my word is fulfilled. What is, what, is, what is this verse telling us? God watches over his word to ensure that whatever he has said, whatever he has spoken, he is going to, fulfill, is going to ensure that it comes to pass. So uh, Joseph is planning to divorce Mary and God interrupts Joseph in a dream and sends an angel to interrupt her says, no, 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 no. I don't want this process stopping. What I've allowed to happen to Mary, it's of me. Mm -hmm. So he interrupts. I want you to see how God is working. Mm -hmm. The NLT puts it this way. The latter part of this verse says, I will certainly carry out my plan. In other words, whatever God has spoken, he will certainly carry it out. Mm -hmm. Okay. At the Berean version Bible puts it this way. I'm watching over my word to accomplish it. Right. So every word that God has spoken, God is watching over every word that is spoken to ensure it comes to pass. Amen. If it hasn't come to pass, it will sooner or later come Amen. to pass, but there will be not one word that God has spoken that will be left unfulfilled. Amen. So speaking on, uh, on the birth of Christ in that way, we need to understand that, that from a scriptural point of view, that the things that God spoke about the birth of Christ, it will, he's going to ensure that it happens. Yeah. And we're going to look at some scriptures so that you can get comfort and know that you can trust the word of God. Yeah. If, you can, if you can see God at work in the birth of Christ and all that's surrounding that whole story, Christmas should be a time to be encouraging that what God said he would what? Do. Yeah. Amen. Amen? Some of you may be questioning and wondering and doubting, is the Lord really going to come for the church? There should be no doubt about that. Right. It's going to happen whether you believe it or not. Yes. Because why? He watches over his word to perform it. God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen? God. Amen. Do, do, do you understand that? Glory. All right? It may not be on your timing or my timing, but he's going to come. Yeah. And therefore, 
you, 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 you can rest on it. What he spoke, he will do. And he's, he's got many examples in the Old Testament, in, in, the, in the Bible, where he spoke certain things and he ensured they came to pass. If I continue again, I'm back in Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, the next verse after that says, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Verse 22. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son. And they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted, God with us. Hallelujah. So the, the prophet had spoken that a virgin shall be with child. Now, from a natural point of view, that sounds impossible. Are you hearing this? Yeah. From a natural point of view. Right? But yet God said in his word, he prophesied hundreds of of years prior to that, that a virgin shall give, shall give birth and his name shall be Emmanuel. And we know that the word Emmanuel means God with us. Well, where is that found? Well, let's go to Isaiah chapter 7 for a moment. Isaiah chapter 7 is the prophet that God used to prophesy this. And because uh, remember, we just read in Matthew chapter 1 verse 22, all this was done that it might be fulfilled. Amen? Amen? Again, God is watching over his word to ensure that what he said will come to pass. Amen. Amen. Right? So in Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14, the word of God says, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Hallelujah. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Glory to God. There it is. God used the prophet Isaiah to prophesy, yes. and God, by his Holy Spirit, caused Mary to become pregnant with the Messiah. He brought it to pass. Joseph was planning to divorce her, but God interrupted it because he wants to make sure that what he said is going to be fulfilled. Hallelujah. He's watching over his word to perform it. If you go to Isaiah chapter 9, Again, we see here in verse 6, the Bible says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulder. Notice it's not governments, plural, it's government, only one government. What does that mean? Well, when, when the time comes, when Jesus reigns on planet Earth, there will only be one government. Amen. Amen. The world is moving towards a global government, is it not? Yes. Yeah. Right? And we know that it's just a matter of time, during the tribulation days, the Antichrist will take over. Yeah, he'll take over and he'll do his thing for the time that, that he's been allotted. But when Jesus returns, it's not going to be governments, it's going to be one government. The saints, we, Old Testament saints, New Testament saints, will, and tribulation saints, will reign with Christ. Amen. Glory to God. We'll be dispersed all over the world in various countries and we will be carrying out the will of God. Only one government. So no, no, notice it says, it says here again, let me read it again. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon, sorry, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Amen. Upon the throne of David, upon the kingdom, Hallelujah. to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. This has not come to pass yet, but it will come to pass. Amen. Amen. Because yeah. God is watching over his word to perform it. Well, as we continue in Matthew chapter 1, I'm going to verse 24. Now, notice how Joseph follows the instructions. Glory to God. Why? Because he's part of all this, fulfilling the will of God. Amen. Verse 24 says, Hallelujah, we're looking at this, this the, the, if you want to call it the Christmas story, the birth of Christ. Verse 24 says, Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, 
did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him and took unto him his wife. So he didn't divorce her. No. Glory to God. He took her. He married her. In other words, he fulfilled his part. And he knew her not until she had brought forth her firstborn son and he called his name Jesus. Exactly as what was said in the past. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Now, if you go with me to Matthew chapter 2, we pick up the story again. And in verse 1, it says, Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east of Jerusalem. And verse 2 says, I notice that he wasn't just born in any city. He could have been born in Jerusalem, but that's not the case. He was, it wasn't prophesied for Jesus to be born in Jerusalem. Neither was he born in Nazareth. The scripture says he was born in where? Bethlehem. Hallelujah. Again, that was prophesied. We'll, we'll come to that in a moment. So saying, verse 2, Where is he that is born of the king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and we've come to worship him. Well, it's interesting, just last week, sorry, I'm thinking last week, it was this week, the 21st, the winter solstice. There was uh, uh, the grand conjunction with the planet Jupiter and the planet Saturn. And when they, and the way they lined up created a bright star. It's believed by those who study astronomy, Bible scholars, it was similar when the star of, uh, uh, of, of the Messiah, the star of Jesus, was shining forth when, when the time came for him to be born. Well, was the star prophesied? Absolutely. The scripture talks about it. Go with me for a moment to Numbers chapter 24. Again, we'll point out to you how God fulfills his word. It's all here in the scriptures. I believe you know this, the story of the, the wise men and the star, but let's go back a little before we come forward to see, and I want you to see in your scriptures that it was prophesied. Matthew, sorry, Numbers chapter 24, verse 17. This is what it says. This is talking about the star of Jacob, which is the Messiah. It says, I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star out of Jacob. A scepter shall rise out of Israel and shall smite the corners of Moab and destroy all the children of Seth. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. This is, this is, the, this is, this is was prophesied yeah, by the prophet Balaam. Yeah. I mean, he wasn't living right. Mm -hmm. He wasn't in the right relationship with, with God, but... You know, when God wants to use any vessel, he can use any vessel he sees fit. I mean, if he can open up the mouth of a donkey to speak, he can use a disobedient prophet, a backslidden prophet. Amen? Amen. Are, are, you, are you hearing that? You remember the story of the, of the young man that uh, uh, he was a prophet and God sent him to, uh, I believe it was Bethel, and he was to prophesy over the altar, and, and, he, and he did, and the king came, and, and the king uh, said, you know, arrest that man, and... And, uh, and when they went to arrest him, the king's hand turned leprosy. Yes, and and, and uh, the prophet prayed for him and his, his hand came back to normal. And he was told, you don't go back home the same way you came. And as he, as he left, I mean, the king offered him his, you know, goods and rewards and stuff like that. And he decided he didn't want it. And the scripture tells us that he left. Mm -hmm. And there was a, a disobedient prophet, an old prophet that heard about what had happened that day and sent his sons after him and says, hey, I'm a prophet too. Come home. Come over to my place and be refreshed. Hmm. Well, you know, the young prophet forgot what God had said. Yeah. He said, you don't return back the same way and you don't eat or drink in this place. Well, he went back to that uh, old prophet house who was in a backsliding state and he ate and drank. And, and while he was eating and drinking, that old prophet began to prophesy. And what I'm sharing with you that God can use a donkey he can use a backsliding prophet. He can use anybody to prophesy as he sees fit. The Bible will tell us Caiaphas, the high priest in the days of Jesus before he was crucified, prophesied. He didn't even realize he was prophesied. He said, expedient 
It's expedient that one man should die for the entire nation. So, so God can use anybody to prophesy as he, as he sees fit. Amen? Glory to God so that you can understand that. Um, it, 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 it helps us. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. So Balaam prophesied about the star. Years later, thousands of years later, the wise men, the Bible says, came to Jerusalem. And they said, we've seen his star in the east. We've come to worship him. The same star that was prophesied thousands of years ago by the prophet Balaam. And verse 3 says, when Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. I want you to know, the whole city was troubled by this whole thing. Yes. When these strangers should come from the east, these wise men should come from the east and ask him, where is this, the king of the Jews? We've come to worship him. And they want to know, how, what is it that you know that we don't know? Well, you know, while they weren't paying attention to the scriptures, they weren't expecting God to fulfill his word. They were, they were not watching to see that God was going to fulfill his word. That's why the Bible says, watch and pray. Yeah. Like whatever God has said, we should be watching. Amen. Amen? Amen. And when it comes to the, the next greatest event that's going to occur is the rapture. Yeah. What should you be doing? You should be watching for the fulfillment. Amen. Because exactly what God did in, in regards to bringing Christ into the earth and all the scriptures that was prophesied about him, it came to pass. Jerusalem. But at the time when the wise men showed up in Jerusalem, which was approximately two years later, the stars still shining, they have, have no, they have, they're totally clued out. Yeah. They have no idea the king of the Jews has been born. It took the wise men to tell them. Right. Yes, they weren't watching. And the scripture says in verse 4, and when they gathered all the chief priests and the scribes and the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet. Interesting. Thus it is written by the prophet. In other words, when they did a diligent search, they realized, Ah, he's supposed to be born in Bethlehem. Not Jerusalem. Not Nazareth. Not any other major city in Israel, but in Bethlehem. It has to be in Bethlehem. And, and in verse 6 it quotes, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah. It, in other words, it's an insignificant city, or, or, or village, or a place. Yeah. It's so insignificant, nobody would think that's where the king of the Jews would be born. Mm -hmm. He should be born in a huge city. He should be born in a, a city of significance. But God is saying, no, he's going to be born in a place of that's not that significant. But it is significant in the eyes of God because Beth means house, lamb, house of God, right? Uh -huh. Yes? Yeah. Right? Amen. Okay. So, for thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people. Well, where was this found? When was this prophesied? Well, if you go to Malachi... Uh, chapter 2, uh, uh, verse, we're going to look at a couple of verses in Malachi. In Malachi chapter 2, verse 7, this is what the scripture tells us. And this is for all of us. It says here, for the priest's lip, lips should keep knowledge. The priest's lips should what? Keep knowledge. Yes. Right? This is Malachi chapter 2, verse 7. Well, you may be here saying, well, well, that's for the religious folks, that's for the leaders, that's for the ministers. Mm -hmm. They are the ones who are supposed to keep knowledge. Well, let me just take it a little further. According to the New Testament, the Bible says in the book of Revelations, in more than one location, in chapter 1, it says, As believers, we are called priests and kings. Yeah. Is it not? Yeah. And, 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 and since we're called priests and kings, the New Testament calls all believers priests and kings, we ought to also keep knowledge. Hence, I said the other day, and I, I'll just remind you, the most informed people on planet Earth should be believers, should be yeah, Christians. Yeah, yeah. 
Keep yourself informed. I asked a question the other day, how many knew there was a grand conjunction with the, with the planet, planets of Jupiter and, and Saturn on the 21st of December on the winter solstice? How many know about it that it's believed that, that was, it was like that the time when the birth of Christ? Many didn't know. It, the Bible is telling us priests, lips should keep knowledge. Amen. Every one of us should be aware of what is going on and what is happening. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? So let me read the verse. It says, For the priest's lips should keep knowledge, and they should seek the law at his mouth, for he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. Now, in Malachi chapter 5, verse 2, is a prophecy. It says, But thou, Bethlehem, Ephrata, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall come forth unto me that is to be a ruler in Israel, whose going forth has been from old, from everlasting. Amen, amen. Oh, glory to God. Oh, sorry. Micah chapter 5, verse 2. I said Malachi. Sorry. Micah chapter 5, verse 2. My mistake. I was reading from Micah chapter 5, verse 2. So in Micah chapter 5, verse 2, that's where the prophecy is. All right? In Malachi chapter 2, verse 7, it's telling us that all priests should keep knowledge. You should be, you should be informed. You should know. All right? So Malachi chapter 5, verse 2, God used the prophet Micah to prophesy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And tell us where the Messiah will be born. Amen. Amen? Yeah. So back to Matthew chapter 2. Let's continue. Matthew chapter 2. Then Herod, when he privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what? time the star appeared and he sent them to Bethlehem because you know he's thinking that's where Jesus is because the scripture says that Jesus would be born in Bethlehem all right right and he says and go and search and diligently for the young child and when you have found him bring me word again that I may come and worship him also well you know saints Jesus wasn't there. Because, again, if you read in the scriptures, the star had been seen for two years. All right? Now, I know Sunday school, the Sunday school curriculums, they will teach that the wise men showed up in Bethlehem, in the manger, to present the gifts to Jesus. But that's not where the wise men found Jesus. Amen? Amen? Okay. Let's continue. Hallelujah. Now in verse 9 going forward, we can see that God by his spirit is leading the wise men. Because you see, the wise, Jesus is not in Bethlehem. Herod and everybody else thinks he's in Bethlehem. But thank God he's not in Bethlehem. God. In verse 9 it says, And when they heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. Yes. It's, not, it's not saying a babe in the manger. Where the young child was. It's calling him a young child. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Okay? God. And, and, and the scripture says, and when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. See, they could trust the star because he says they left from the east, traveled thousands of miles to come to Jerusalem. It brought them that far where they were thinking that it should be taking them to Bethlehem. Bethlehem is only approximately two miles away. You know, just, just outside of Jerusalem, really. It didn't take them there. But they could, since the star had brought them that this far, they could trust it that if I follow the star, it will take us right to where the child is, the king of the Jews. Verse 11 says, And when they had come into the house, does it say manger here, saints? 
I, I just want to bring some correction while we're going through this. Because a lot of Christians are believing and still believe in the Sunday school story. Are you hearing me? Yes. <laughs> they believe in the nativity story. Yes. And you need to hear what the word of God is saying. Yes, God. Okay. Verse 11 says, And when they had come unto the house, they saw the young child. There it is again, the young child. Uh -huh. And said, and the child was Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Now, just turn with me for a moment to Romans chapter 8, for a moment. I want you to see how God is leading these, these wise men. He's using the star to lead them, is he not? Yes. Okay? We're living in the time sense, perilous times, it was what the Bible calls, all right? Where we need to be led by the Spirit of God. As these wise men were led by the star, we need to be led by the Spirit of God. As the, as the Israelites were in the wilderness, they were led by the cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. Yes. When the cloud of day uh, was positioned to move from point A to point B, Israel knew they had to pack all their belongings, their tents, and follow the cloud. Yes. And if the pillar of fire was, is, was on the move at night time, they had to follow the pillar of, of fire. Mm -hmm. That's what they had to do. Yes. And it's God's desire for you and I to learn how to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. True. If we're, we're living in these times, we heard a testimony of one saying, had they not prayed in the Spirit, things would not have worked out for them. They would not have known what to do yeah. in regards to getting their osa. Mm -hmm. We need to be praying in the Spirit. We need to be in tune with God so He can guide and direct us and lead us to make the right, wise, godly decisions. It's not okay to just pick up and say, I'm going to go from point A to point B. Are you hearing this? Yes. It's not okay. If the Spirit of God is not leading you, you could get yourself into trouble. Mm -hmm. And many Christians are getting themselves into trouble. Yeah. Yeah. Because they're not being led by the Spirit of God. They're doing their own thing. Mm -hmm. I remember the story at the beginning of this year where this, young, where this man in, uh, um, in Australia, he decided that uh, he wanted to get a job. Mm -hmm. And so he applied for a job. Mm -hmm. And it was outside of Australia. It was in China. And he went to his pastor and he said, um, I've got an opportunity to go to China to, 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 to accept a job. So it was the latter part of last year. And his pastor prayed with him. And the pastor just did not feel that it was the leading of God. And over several days of praying and fasting, he came back to the man and says, look, I don't believe you're supposed to be going here. And uh, nevertheless, the, the, the man decided he was going to do it anyway. And he left. And he went to China, and, he, and, and where he ended up, where he was going, was exactly the, the epic center of Wuhan of China, the exact place where COVID-19 broke out. And there he was stuck in China, in that area. He couldn't leave to go back home. He was stuck until, for many weeks, he could not work because the place was in a lockdown. Since we need to be led by the Spirit of God. Yes. So he put himself in a difficult situation because he wasn't following the leading of God. Yeah. That's right. Okay, we need to follow the spirit, the leading of the spirit of God. Now, 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 now listen, listen what it says in Romans chapter 8. Mm -hmm. Romans chapter 8, um, verse, I'm reading several verses here from verse 11. I'm deliberately reading this scripture so you can see it for yourself. Mm -hmm. It says, but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, if you're a believer, the spirit of God is in you. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Wherefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. If you're a believer, if you're a Holy Ghost filled believer, you're not to follow your flesh. You are to follow what the spirit of God is telling you. You don't follow your emotions either. Are you hearing this? Your emotions can lead you in a direction that's not good. You gotta learn to follow the Spirit of God. Preach. Glory. Okay? So, your emotions is part of your soul. Mm -hmm. The flesh, when the Bible and King James talks about your flesh, it is it's not only your physical body, but it's your soul. Mm -hmm. Your soul is your intellect, your will, and your emotions. Mm -hmm. 
and you know all about your physical body. All that is called the, soul, the, the flesh from a, from, a, from a biblical perspective. The flesh can get in the way. Yeah. Your soul can lead you astray. Mm -hmm. We are called to be led by the Spirit of God. The Bible says we are a spirit, we possess a soul, and we live in a physical body. Right. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Jesus said, my word is spirit. That's what he said. The word of God, God's word is spirit. We need spirit, food. How, does, how is our spirit fed? The word of God. Right? How do we feed our physical body? Physical food. Hallelujah. But spiritual food is the word of God will feed our spirit. It will strengthen the spirit man. It will cause the spirit man to become sharper and be in tune and be aware of what, knowing what to do, what not to do. It will be sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our spirit is supposed to follow the Holy Spirit. It says here in verse 12, Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. Don't follow the flesh. For if we live after the flesh, you shall die. You can get yourself into trouble. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall what? Live. God. Are you hearing this? Yes. Again, I've, I've read stories and testimonies of, um, of a minister, a um, prominent minister. Um, he would travel from point A to point B to minister prominent churches. And, and one day... He got up and his wife saw him sit in his bed and he said to his wife, I just don't feel as if I should be going to this particular place to minister. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, she, she, she heard what he had to say. What was going on? The Holy Spirit was speaking to him, but he didn't pick up on it. He knew, he just had a sense that he shouldn't be doing it. Nevertheless, out of obligation, because he had made a commitment, he went. What happened? He never made it. The plane crashed and he perished in the plane. God was trying to alert him in his spirit. I don't want you going on this trip. Verse 13. I'm in chapter 8 of the book of Romans. For if we live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you through the Spirit do modify the deeds of the body, you shall live. Now here's the verse I was leading to, verse 14. For as many that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Yes. It's important in the days that we're living in to be led by the Spirit of God. Preach. Don't pick yourself up and go from point A to point B just like that. You find out from God. You understand whether or not it's God's will for you to be doing that. Because these wise men, they could have gone off to Bethlehem. They would not have found Jesus. Because Jesus was not in Bethlehem. They would have traveled to Bethlehem in vain. But they had learned to follow the star. That's why when they saw the star, they rejoiced. Because it brought them this far, they knew that it would take them right to their journey and they'll be successful in what they, were, what they set out to do. For as many that are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. Verse 15 says, For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Hallelujah. Verse 16 says, The Spirit itself, this is the Holy Spirit. How do you know that King James is a capital S? The Spirit itself bears witness with your spirit. Notice it's a small s. Are you seeing this? That we are the children of God. You ought to have a witness in your spirit. The Holy Spirit should give your spirit a witness and you know that you know that you know. It's okay to do this. It's not okay to do that. Any uneasiness like this man, this minister, when he sat up in his bed, he felt uneasy. He shouldn't be traveling. It, that should be a check to you to let you know. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. So the wise men departed and came to the house where Jesus was. It happened to be in Nazareth. Amen. And they gave him the gifts, the gold, the frankincense, and the myrrh. Hallelujah. Notice that, again, I'm, I'm still in Matthew chapter 2. 
I'm going on to verse 12 now. We're talking about the Christmas story here. Um, God gives direction again. He says, and being warned, and verse 12 is where I'm at. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod. Notice they got instructions now. They departed unto their own country another way. And when they departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appears, on, appears to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and flee unto Egypt, and be thou there until I bring thee word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. Verse 14, And when he arose, he took the, ch the young child and his mother by night, and departed into Egypt. What did Joseph do? He got up right away. Yes. He did not put this off. Rest assured, Herod's spies were probably following the wise men. Rest assured, Herod would find out sooner or later the wise men ended up in Nazareth. God is giving Joseph warning, get out of here now. Don't put this off. This is not for when in the morning when you wake up, you leave now. In the middle of the night, he woke him up. He gave him the dream. He woke him up. And what and what what do we see Joseph doing? He got up immediately and he acted. He left in the middle of the night when no one else is aware of him leaving with Mary and with Jesus. And he got a head start and departed towards Egypt. So if people discover that Joseph and Mary is gone the next day, I mean they wouldn't know where they've gone. Amen? Amen. And the Bible says in verse 15, And was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. Well, saints, this is another pro prophecy here. Out of Egypt have I called my son. Well, you'll find this in Hosea chapter 11. God used the prophet Hosea to prophesy this. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm showing you what God said he would, he would do. He has fulfilled. That's right. Hosea chapter 11, verse 1. And it says, When Israel was a child, then I loved him and called my son out of Egypt. Glory to God. This is prophetic both ways. We know Israel is an, the, uh, uh, Israel and his 12 sons and his family, the nation of Israel, they ended up in Egypt, did they not? Yes, they did. Yes. And it's been 400 plus years there. Mm -hmm. But this is, this, is, this is like a double prophecy if you could look at it that way. God is also saying, I'm going to call my son, the son of God, out of Egypt. Amen. Prophesied it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceedingly wroth and set forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and in all the coast thereof from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. Do you see what he did? Yeah. The information that the wise men told the king says, we've seen the star for two years. He used that to say, okay, I know the child is at least two years old. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet, saying, In Ramah there was a voice heard, lamentation, weeping, and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, and would not be comforted, because they are not. Well, where is this prophecy found? Well, that's a prophecy sense. If, you, know, you may not realize that, but you'll find that in the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 31. Hallelujah. We see God fulfilling the prophecy. Amen. It was prophesied that this would happen. Glory to God. This is what it says in Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 15. Thus saith the Lord, a voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation and bitter weeping. Amen. Rahel weeping. For her children refused to be comforted for her children because they were not. Amen. And that whole region of Bethlehem, that whole region that the scripture talks about, 
I mean, Herod did not limit the slaughter just to Bethlehem. It's the whole region. And he slaughtered all the male children that were two years and younger. Just slaughtered them. It was a massacre. This is what he did. And this all has to do with the birth of Christ. But two years later, this is happening. All right? Oh, hallelujah. But when Herod was dead, behold, the angel of the Lord appears in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise, take the young child, his mother, and go into the land of Israel, for they are dead which sought the young child's life. And he rose and took the young child and his mother and came into the land of Israel. But when he heard that Achilles did reign in Judea in the room of his father Herod. He was afraid to go hither, to go thither. Notwithstanding, being warned of God in a dream, he turned aside into the parts of Galilee. Mm -hmm. And he came and dwelt in the city called Nazareth, yes. that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophets, he shall be called a Nazarene. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. That he shall be called what? A Nazarene. A Nazarene. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, Jesus was called a, Na the, uh, he was called a Nazarene, was he not? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Oh, glory to God. He had that vow. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to wrap up with these two scripture verses. If the Lord leads, well, we may continue in this direction. But saints, what the Lord is saying here today, he wants us to know the scriptures that were prophesied about the Messiah about the birth of Christ. He wants us to know that, that exactly what he said, he did. Praise God. And anything else he said he's going to do, mm -hmm. he will. He will. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Your faith should be placed in the word of God. Mm -hmm. Not in man, not in man's stories, not in men's opinions, not even in men's testimonies but in the Word of God. Amen. That's the truth. Your, your faith should be anchored in the Word of God. And as we continue this holiday season of Christmas and celebrating the birth of Christ, know why you're celebrating what God has done. No, what, no wonder when the birth of Christ occurred. And you could read that in the book of Luke. We won't go into it right now. The angels appeared in the heavens and said, uh, praising God and wishing goodwill unto men. And it was just a joyous occasion because the Savior had been born in planet Earth. Amen? Mm -hmm. God's plan of salvation was being fulfilled. Mm -hmm. And it has been fulfilled. Mm -hmm. and God's when Jesus returns, He will fulfill the rest of the other scriptures concerning Him. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. Well, let me just close with these, with these couple of verses in, in uh, the book of Judges. Talk about the Nazarene. We see that uh, uh, Samson had the, a Nazarene vow. Did, did he not? Yeah. Okay, in, in, in Judges chapter 13, verse 5, it says, And for lo, thou, for lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son. This is being spoken to uh, um, Samson's mother. No razor shall come on his head, for the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb. He shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. Well, you know, the intent of Jesus coming to the planet Earth was to deliver not only Israel out of the hands of its enemies, but the rest of the world out of the kingdom of darkness. Amen. Amen. Jesus is delivered too. Yeah. So Samson is also a type of a Christ, so to speak. Yeah. All right. And then we see in uh, uh, Samuel, mm -hmm. First Samuel, uh, chapter one, we see we, we we get a glimpse of this again in First Samuel chapter one, verse eleven. Uh, this is uh, um, Hannah. She's making a vow and she's believing God for a male child. Mm -hmm. And she's got an, a, like an impossible situation that she would need an intervention, a miracle from God to help her uh, to come past. But listen, listen to what she says. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou will indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid and remember me and not forget thine handmaid, but will... Give unto thine handmaid a man-child, then I will give 
him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come on his head. What does that mean? He's a Nazarite, a Nazarite vow. Are you seeing this? If you're going to celebrate Christmas, know why you're celebrating. If you're going to rejoice, know why you're going to rejoice. Amen? It's not all about festivity. It's not just about partying. It's not about all of that. It's, it's about the birth of Christ. Amen. Right? Know that what God said, all that He said He would do concerning the birth of Christ mm -hmm. and all surrounding that, yeah. it all came to pass. He used prophets like Isaiah to speak about it. Okay? Micah and Malachi to speak about it. Hallelujah. Amen? Ho Hosea, many different prophets he used to speak about it. And hundreds of years, thousands of years ago, and the Lord watched over his word to ensure that what he said he would do. Amen. Glory, to Praise God. Glory to God. He watched over his word to ensure that what he said he will do. He hasn't changed. He continues to watch over his word to ensure what he said he will do to make sure it comes to pass. Hallelujah. You need to understand this, saints. Mm -hmm. You need to understand this. Yeah. Thank you. He is true to his word. Mm -hmm. If you're reading the story of the birth of Christ in Luke chapter 1 and chapter 2, in chapter 1 it talks about a priest called Zacharias. Mm -hmm. He was an old man with his wife called Elizabeth. He was in the temple one day fulfilling the, the duties of a priest. And one day suddenly the angel of the Lord just appeared unto him and started to speak unto him. And said, fear not, Zacharias, I've got good news for you. The good news is that your wife is going to get pregnant. But if you read it very carefully, the Bible says Zacharias doubted the good news. And Gabriel said, I am Gabriel who stand in the presence of God. Because you doubt what I say, you're going to have to read it for yourself. You'll be dumb until these, what I've spoken, come to pass. What was Gabriel telling him? God is not going to allow you, Zacharias, to interrupt the will of God. God will watch over his Hallelujah. word to perform it. Yeah. Because if you're talking doubt and unbelief now... You will talk doubt and unbelief when you go home and talk to your wife. You'll talk doubt and unbelief throughout the pregnancies. You will, your words will have the power in the, in the Bible says. The Bible very plainly clears and says, Life and death is in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Therefore, God's not going to allow you to speak, Zacharias, for until this is fulfilled. I'm going to, your mouth is going to be shut. You're not going to interrupt this. You're not going to be allowed to interrupt this. You've got to understand the story, says. Okay? And then the Bible tells us, again, if you continue reading in, 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 uh, in, in Luke chapter 1 and 2, in, in, uh, in particular chapter 1, God sends the same angel. His name is Gabriel. And he shows up to a young virgin. Her name happens to be Mary. And he says, fear not, Mary. I've got some good news for you. You've been, highly, you've been highly favored. You found favor in the eyes of God. I know there's many virgins that want to be the one who carries the Messiah, but you're the one who's been chosen. And you're going to give birth to the Messiah. Well, Mary says to her, to, to, to the angel, she says, how is this, how is this going to be? I'm, I, I, don't have, I, don't know, I know not a man. I've not been with a man. And the angel of the Lord explains to her and says, the Holy Spirit shall come upon you. God. And the power of the Holy Ghost shall overshadow you. And cause you to conceive. Mm. And you'll give birth to the Messiah. And you'll call his name Jesus. You can read that for yourself. Yeah. Now, Mary asked the question. Zacharias asked the question. 
Zach, the difference between the two, you have to read it very carefully. Zacharias asks in doubt. He's full of doubt. And Mary just wants to know, how is this going to come about? She's not, she just wants to know, tell me what to do. And later on we see in verse 38 of chapter 1 a book of Luke, she puts herself in agreement and says, Be it unto me according to the word of God. That's her faith. Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. And it was established. Again, I'm emphasizing today's saints what the Spirit of God is emphasizing. God is not a man that he should lie. Mm -hmm. Neither is the Son of Man that he should repent. This is Numbers chapter 23 verse 19. Has he not said, shall he not do it? Yes. Or has he spoken and shall he not make it good? He told Jeremiah, I'm going to watch over my word to perform it. Every word that God has spoken, he's watching over it to perform it. Thank you, Jesus. In fact, the Bible says that the angels of God hearken to the voice of God. They're, they're carrying out the word of God says. And God will, God will interrupt if he has to interrupt. He will intervene if he has to interrupt. Inter intervene to make sure that what he said is going to come to pass. No man, no spirit, power, personality, no devil in hell, out of hell can stop the word of God from coming to pass. And if you're here doubting whether the next greatest event that's going to take place, that's going to impact this world, the rapture, if you doubt that's not going to happen, I've got news for you. What God said in his word, it will come to pass whether you believe it or not. Amen. Whether you doubt or not, yeah. it, it, you, are, you cannot stop it. You Please. cannot interrupt it. Zacharias couldn't stop the plan of God bringing forth the forerunner because it was prophesied there would be a forerunner before Jesus. Yes. It happens to be John the Baptist. Uh -huh. Zachariah was, God was not going to allow him to stop it. Nobody's going to be able to stop the next greatest event. Amen. What God said he will do. He will do. Amen. And saints, I want you to take courage in his word. Also, I want to encourage you, make sure the times that we're in, you are being led by the Spirit of God and you're not just following your emotions your own thing, you make sure as the wise men were led by the star, you are led by the Holy Spirit. Amen. And everything you do, because the times we're in is, called, is what the Bible calls perilous times, you need to be led and be guided by the Spirit of God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's not time for doubting like Zacharias. It's time for remaining in faith. Watch your words. Watch the words you speak. Watch what you're entertaining. Watch what you're thinking. Glory to God. Joseph was entertaining the idea of getting rid of Mary, divorcing her. But God intervened. What does that tell us? God knows our thoughts. He knows everything you're thinking about. And if it's contrary to the will of God, and if it has a potential, he will interrupt if he sees fit. Oh, glory to God. Saints, keep your eyes on Jesus. The Lord is about to return. The Jewish people missed him. Two years, Jesus, the Son of God, had been upon earth and they didn't even realize this, the Messiah had been in their midst. Totally missed it because they weren't watching. You need to be watching for when he comes. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you the glory, we give you the praise. We thank you for your holy word this morning. I thank you, Lord, that you've spoken to us through your word. I pray you'd help every one of us to glean what we need to glean from your word, what we've heard today. I pray you help us not to doubt what you've spoken. I pray, Lord, that you, what you've spoken, you watched over to ensure it's going to come to pass. And I pray, Lord, that everyone that's hearing this word today will take comfort and be encouraged, Amen. knowing that what you've spoken in the past, you brought it to pass concerning the birth of Christ. What else were the other things that you've spoken you will surely bring it to pass. Oh Lord, I pray you strengthen everyone. Hallelujah. I pray that they will know that they can trust you, trust your word. Amen. Even now, cause these truths to sink deep into their hearts and their spirit. And it will become a part of them. And they'll be like Mary. And they'll be able to say, be it unto me according to your word, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whatever you're speaking. Oh Lord, the prophet, the apostle Paul said, there shall be a prophet. That what he believed exactly what God said he was going to bring to pass Amen. Elizabeth said there shall be a performance of your words to Mary because she believed oh God whatever your people are believing you for 
I pray you will cause them to see your performance, the very thing that you said will come to pass. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Amen.